Hello, Patina. There's Jack Moore. I always, hey, Jack Moore, I always get you confused with Jack Wall. Sorry about that. Jack Moore, everybody. NASA artist. Karen Wall's back. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so excited. This is our 2.30 Pacific time high school level drawing lesson. And uh, I'm so excited. We are going to get a tour with Jack Moore from NASA. So right away, I'm just going to turn it right over to Jack. Jack, you have all the time you want. I'll I'll just let you go, and then I'll draw with you. If you're going to draw, the, with, I'll have him ready to draw with you too, okay? So I'm so excited, Jack. This is such an honor and a privilege. Now, Jack used to watch me when he was younger on a show called Commander Mark the Secret City. I was able to teach millions of kids around the world how to draw. And then I did a 19, this was 1985. In uh, 1996, we did another series called Imagination Day with Mark, with Mark Kistler. In this series, we won the Emmy, which was really cool because hopefully that will entice you to join me and watch that series on Amazon Prime. I hope tonight you have so much fun drawing with me and Jack that you'll come to Amazon Prime and draw with me. I'm actually uh, talking about doing a new series with Netflix and Amazon Prime, one of the two or even HBO, and I hope Jack Moore will be our guest artist on that series. I have a lot of lessons on YouTube. I'll tell you more about that later. I hope you guys check it out. All right, this is our high school um, age lesson. It's going to be a little more advanced. I'm going to get into um, uh, some one-point perspective uh, later on. We'll see how much time we have. Um, let's go. Let us draw with Jack Moore. I'm going to pull him on. You guys are in for such a treat. Here you go. Here comes Jack Moore. Hi, hey, Dad. Mark, can you hear me? Oh, wait, I got to plug in my, my battery. Sorry, hold on. All right. Dude, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting out there. For nah, no worries. No. I just got here. Ah, oh, this is so cool, you handsome devil. We love Jack. <laughs> we love Jack. Well. All right, take it away. Take it away. I'm going to mute my All button. right, cool. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate the time to, to hang out with you guys a little bit online. And I am coming to you live from NASA Johnson Space Center, home of crude exploration and mission control and all kinds of super cool programs. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I could switch my camera around so you can see my view, just right across the street there, uh, there we have one of our shuttle replicas on top of the 747 that used to carry the shuttle all over the United States when it came back home. So lots of really amazing things. And one of the really amazing things that you're gonna see in this building back here in just a few minutes, this is where we house uh, our Saturn V moon rocket it is one of three moon rockets uh, still left in the world. And we're gonna go inside and just take a little walking tour to check it out. So I'm gonna flip over so I can see comics as you guys have things that you wanna know about the rocket, you know, feel free to ping me. And uh, if, I, if I don't know the answer, I might be able to make up something that sounds really good or, or at least try to um, find it out for you later. So here we go. We're going to go into our Saturn V facility. So we still have a few folks on the inside. Oh, I'll just peek around the corner too. We had a few other rockets here. So just out there in the field, we also have one of our Mercury Redstone rockets. Uh, this is a replica. And then also what we call the Little Joe 2. Little Joe 2 is actually a uh, test rocket that we use to uh, make sure the crew escape system uh, would work properly and, and work automatically. So. It's free. It's a public park. You can come right in. You can do exactly what I'm doing. There's no badge read or anything. You just walk inside and you'll be treated with this view. So this is our Saturn V rocket. Uh, this is actually, if you were to, if you had to fly a mission right now, this would be the rocket that you'd want to uh, pull together because everything here uh, is as close to the flight as anything that exists on this planet. Um, obviously, there'd be some challenges getting this thing up in the air, but it is the most complete Saturn V uh, in existence. So I am going to just take a real quick walk all the way down to the end so we can start our tour at the, at the business end because this is a staged rocket. So that means there's three separate stages during the launch profile. You have your, your first stage, which basically gets you up off the ground, get you moving your second stage which carries you to orbit and then your final stage 
which sends you on your way to the moon. So lots of uh, amazing, an incredible amount of power in this thing. And it's a little bit of a walk, a little bit of a walk, uh, about 360 feet from end to end, from nose to tail. And, uh, you know, put it in perspective, that's like just taking a stroll from one end zone of a football field down to the other side. So it's a pretty big beast. So when you stand this thing up on its end, we're talking about a 36-story building. And you can just imagine yourself sitting in a small capsule with your crew, and you guys have been training for years to fly to the moon. And when you climb onto this thing, you are, you're walking on a very small gantry overlooking the, the ocean, uh, the Atlantic Ocean, and looking down at this rocket as it is being fueled and ice is forming on the outside because of the cryogenic fuels and it is creaking and moaning and this monster sounds like it is alive. And you are about to climb inside and propel yourself to what amounts to almost a whole nother world. So an incredible, incredible experience. But let's take a look at some of the really amazing pieces of this vehicle. So right now we are standing underneath the F1 engine cluster. So we have five of these massive F1 engines. These are the world's most powerful liquid-fueled single-chambered engine. It produces roughly 600 million, million with an M, pounds of thrust. And when you combine them all together, you're looking at about seven and a half, um, well, so, uh, kind of lost my train of thought there. Can you hear me? I'm getting an odd feedback in my headset, Mark. Oh, we, we, I hear you. Well, super clear. All right, super perfect, clear. Perfect. And, and the answer is, the answer is a lot. That's the answer. <laughs> a lot. That's right. And, and the neat thing about this uh, engine design, and we'll look at this in a second later on down the line, uh, all these engines, with the exception of the one in the very middle, have the ability to gimbal. So if you're looking at the engine, right? Here's my hand as the engine. And the thrust comes out here. They can actually move like this. Uh, and that helps you to steer yourself. Because I always like to point out, when you are on a rocket, it is kind of an odd design because if you think about it, all the weight's up there, but your force is right here. So trying to steer yourself, you have to really uh, do it from the back end. It's like balancing a broom in the palm of your hand. Have you ever done that where you try to keep it up in the air? So these engines will move to balance the Saturn V and it does it automatically. So this isn't something that the, the, uh, the astronauts actually control. They could if they needed to. But we had sophisticated computers of the era, remember this is the 1960s, um, that were built by IBM that were the brains of the Saturn V. And we'll look at those two here in a second. So when the first stage would ignite, you're looking at about seven and a half million pounds of thrust, an incredible amount of energy coming out of these things. And uh, Gene Cernan, he has a book that is really a, an amazing read. He talks about that experience of sitting up there in the capsule when those things ignite. And then this, the, the bolts that are holding it down to the launch tower let go. He basically says, you feel like you are going somewhere. And it is quite a ride. Now, for the artist out here, I do have a couple of interesting things to point out. You'll notice that there's a, an interesting black and white uh, uh, paint job on the Saturn V. These actually serve a, 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 a very specific engineering purpose. If we had a, just a large black rocket or a large white rocket, um, if we were tracking it with our cameras as it got further and further away, we would lose track of what side we were looking at. So this gave them the ability that no matter what side they were looking at, just by looking at the paint job, they could run some data and figure out, okay, this is, this is the starboard or the port side. And then also, if you look at these decals here, and this is my, my proud connection with the uh, uh, Apollo era, these were, a, a lot of these were done by General Dynamics out of uh, Dallas in, in uh, Fort, Worth, uh, Fort Worth in the Dallas area. And my grandfather actually worked at General Dynamics and helped to do some of these, these layouts. And um, this was a, a time where graphic designers were literally working with uh, sticky vinyl and would cut things out with razor blades and apply them by hand and no computers to speak of. So a very, very uh, old fashioned way of doing things. And then up on the uh, hanging from the rafters there, we had these crew patches that symbolize key events or uh, key missions for, for each of the flights. And, you know, it's always fun to point out that, you know, when NASA develops these, the astronauts will work closely with an artist 
to come up with these individual designs. So NASA needs artists. That's something I always like to reiterate. So we just walked past the first stage. That took about two and a half minutes. That's exactly how long this thing would burn. The first stage consumes about three tons of fuel every single second. And that is an incredible amount of power. Once that thing is emptied out, we don't need any more. That's excess weight, so we're going to get rid of it. And we do a stage separation, and that falls back into the ocean. And then the second stage ignites, and here we have our J2 engines. Those five engines will fire back up, and that carries us the rest of the way to orbit. And those will shut off and actually turn back on twice uh, during the launch sequence. And once we get on orbit, now we're traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. And that is roughly about five miles every second. That is incredibly fast, we're talking about 25 times faster than the speed of sound. And that's what it takes to keep ourselves on orbit going around the Earth. Um, so at that point, this is all that's left of the vehicle. We've got the final stage and the command module and the lunar lander that will be up towards the front. We'll look at that in a second. This this section of rocket is actually what gets us to the moon. It's that final push that we need to leave the gravitational bonds of Earth and start sailing towards another body out there in the solar system, of course, the moon in this case. After this engine fires, we are now speeding along at 25,000 miles per hour. That's essentially escape velocity. That's what we need to get out of this gravity well of Earth. Once that burns, we release it. And now we have the final stages, this large cone, that silver cylinder up front, and then the launch escape system that actually jettisons during the launch sequence or after we've reached orbit. And whew, whew, that's a long walk. And so basically this final section here, that will stay in space. So uh, there's uh, some of these segments have impacted with the lunar surface and some of them are actually still out there uh, caught in the sun's uh, gravitational field, and uh, you can still spot them every now and then if you know where to look and you've got the right kind of telescope. So we're going we're gonna to go up these stairs here, and I'm going to show you the interior of the Saturn V. Now, the ring of wires and boxes you see here, these are the brains of Saturn V. On these uh, fixtures, you would have uh, uh, computers, and you would also have uh, gimbals or gyroscopes and the gyroscopes that basically would track the trajectory of the rocket. So if you started to have a slight tilt one way or the other, those gimbals would detect it and the computers would send data back to your engines. Remember how the engines gimbled? gimbled? This is where those decisions are made in a split second. Now on the inside, this is where we'd store our lunar lander. Um, once we were on orbit and we no longer needed the, the brains and the fairing, that would fall away. And the way that would happen if you look on the side there, there's a, a hinge. And so this whole thing opens up like an alligator's mouth and just slowly falls away, revealing the lunar lander, which would be right behind that white comb. The command module and the lunar lander would then drift apart slightly, and the astronauts would turn around their command module, the gumdrop-shaped uh, object you see there. In this case, it's brown, but it would actually be silver on orbit because it would be covered with mylar. The brown color you see there is actually, isn't rust, it's actually an ablative material that protects them on re-entry. And they would turn their spaceship around and dock with the lunar lander and would complete their journey to the moon. So that, in a nutshell, is the Saturn V rocket. And one of the reasons we were really excited to, to jump online today and talk to you guys about this vehicle is because in July, we'll be celebrating 50 years since we landed on the surface of the moon with Buzz Aldrin, and Neil Armstrong, and of course we had a series of successful flights all the way up to 1972 with this incredible vehicle. So it's just kind of fun to showcase it, and you know, for you guys in high school, as you're kind of making decisions about your career, uh, if you are keenly interested in art, don't rule out NASA. NASA needs artists. We're going to need those people that are going to design the mission patches that'll take humans to Mars and. You know, I think Mark and I are, are kind of secretly conniving to do an artist colony that may live on the moon someday. So, <laughs> so we are, we're super excited. And, uh, you know, watch the news because uh, by 2020, NASA will test the space launch system. Now, the cool thing about what you guys are looking at right now, this is the most powerful rocket that's ever been built. 
Well, when SLS launches, this will now have the second place ribbon because SLS will, will take its place as the heavy lift capability vehicle for NASA. And uh, that'll carry us back to the moon where we'll establish a lunar outpost that'll orbit the moon, kind of like a space station for the moon. And then eventually uh, we'll see humans walking on the surface in the next five, five to six years. So very, very exciting times. And uh, Mark invited me to to take you on a little tour and then also to do a little drawing with you. So I think... Are you going to do the drawing? I'm going to try, Mark. So... Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I'm out for, I'm so loud. So I I, I, hey, quick, quick. Can I, get, can I ask you a question real go quick? Go for it. What's the... Uh, first of all, I need everybody that's watching to please do a bunch of hearts for Jack. He's... It's... Uh, what, is it kind of hot, warm right now down there? No. Well, you know, we're, we're in this... It's like 67 right now, but I am wearing a okay, sweater, so, so, and it is nice and toasty yeah. in here. And <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks for taking all the time to do that. Uh, look at all those hearts. You're getting oh, thousands of hearts. You guys are awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Now, the other thing is, what's the lift capability of the new rocket versus the Saturn V? Is it uh, 1.5 of Saturn rocket? Is it, oh, wow. is it double? What, that's a, what, what do you think? That's a good question. You know, I'll tell you where the extra power comes from. So. Saturn V, like the space shuttle, is going to use what we call the RS-25 engines, and that's basically what the space shuttle have, uh, and it'll have four of those. So those are still not quite as powerful as the Saturn V's F1 engine. Pardon me if I'm getting really geeky. If I'm getting too geeky, just throw some thumbs up. I love up. it. I love it. I love it. But, I love it, I love but it. the difference in power is going to come out of our solid rocket boosters. So if you remember, the space shuttle had the white rockets on the side. When those things would light up, they each produced about 3 million pounds of thrust. And so we're going to have two of those boosters, but they're actually going to be a lot longer than what we had on the space shuttle. So that's where we're getting a whole lot, of, a whole lot more of our power. So the, the, the SLS, and I'm kind of ballparking, it's going to come in at roughly about 8 million pounds of thrust, where your uh, Saturn V had about 7.5. And, and, and then there's also different variants. So uh, once we launch the first one, the second one will even be more powerful. So they're going to be tiered in terms of their capability. And the reason that's important is because, you know, we want to send our crew, but then we also want to send pieces of the Lunar Gateway that's going to build our space station out there. We want to send habitats. We want to send supplies. We want to send rovers. So this is basically going to be our, our work truck to get us onto the moon to stay so we can do some more science and research and use the moon as that launching off point to go deeper into space because kind of got our eye on that red planet too looking looking forward to exploring that a little bit what what year what year do you think that we'll we'll uh actually uh get what's the goal for man on mars women men women people humans humanity <laughs> when, when will humanity. humanity set foot on mars well, that okay. is a fantastic question, especially for your high school audience, because NASA is projecting out to about 2030. So that seems like a long time away. But, you know, if, if anyone sitting here right now has, a incline, you know, they're, they're interested in math or science or engineering, you think about that, you know, when you graduate, it could be this year, it could be next year, you go to school, you're going to get your four-year degree, bachelor's degree. If you wanted to you know, get an advanced degree, like a master's or a doctorate, another eight years. And so, man, you're already at 12. You get a little bit of professional experience, maybe come work at NASA, you get some good qualifications under your belt. Well, by the time your resume is ready to apply to be an astronaut, that's about the time we'd be flying to Mars. So very real possibility that if you plan your educational trajectory now to to be a candidate to go to Mars, uh, that could be a reality. You know, we're, we're building on the shoulders of these guys that built the Saturn V and that paved what the about, way for Apollo. What, a, what about taking the coolest online cartoonist to Mars? <laughs> I I'm, trying to, I'm trying to rationalize it, Jack. I well, I tell you that. what. I, I'll, I'll pitch in. I've got like 50 bucks, man. I'll pitch I in. I got to tell you, hey, Mark, here, I, you know, my, my, journey, my journey at NASA started with watching, you know, a TV series that ta taught me a lot about drawing. And today, you know, is a very valuable tool when I'm looking at designs. Was, was it that one to, right there? There he is. Yeah, there's the commander. Ground control to is Commander Mark. Yeah, right that's there? him. That's him. Right there. So, you know, pretty, pretty funny. I mean, I remember when I used to come out here when I was that age, this, this building wasn't here. It was actually all outdoors. So very iconic piece of the landscape. Hey, Ireland, I have a question from Alfred from Dublin, Ireland. How much fuel did you say uses to send the rocket? 
So the first stage of that rocket actually burns about three, uh, three tons of fuel every second. And the total fuel, wow. the, the, the initial stage uses liquid oxygen and uh, kerosene, believe it or not, where we'd use actually liquid oxygen and hydrogen in our modern day vehicles, but that used kerosene. And I'm kind of dancing around the exact number because I'm not really sure. <laughs> it's de- it's down good. there on the infographic, a lot. but my legs are tired. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a hoop, super lot, a whole yeah. hoop, turbo lot, a lot, a lot of fuel. All right, so you can do a drawing for us, buddy? Well, you were talking about one-point perspective, so maybe uh... – uh, No, 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 no. I'm going to draw yours. I'm ready. Let's okay, do it. Okay, well, I have my, I'm all right. Ready. So I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm going to need a second are here you, to, are, to get my – are you, it's all right. You can sit on the ground. Well, I'm, I'm on a to... bench here. I've got my, my Star Wars backpack. And... Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, You're so I've cool. I've got my Dare United Explorer Everybody, Jack, yeah. Jack, woo. So this is actually. Um... You're sitting down. You're going to draw on your lap. You are yeah. such a, a drawing animal. <laughs> I'll just kind of give you a sense. You know, these are just concepts that, you know, when we're working on different display and exhibits. You know, this is an event we did. Ooh, top secret. Oh, yeah. Top this, is, secret. this is, I'm opening up the secret binder. Uh, but this is when we did our, our crew announcement at NASA, you know, so all these ideas, when I go into meetings and I got to sketch these things out and, and present these ideas, having the ability to draw them out so I can present them to our internal clients and our external clients is, is always super helpful. Um, so I always liked how you said when we did the, co- the uh, comic convention, the, the, bo- the panels talking about how NASA artists are the translators from the scientific nerdy techno tech, techno geeks to the public you guys are sharing the vision and the dream and the passion the magic of rockets in space with us public. that's right yeah and it's you know nasa there's a lot of high-tech gobbledygook you probably heard a little bit come out of my mouth and i apologize for that but you know it's really exciting stuff and we are you know as, as the communicators and the designers it's our job to try to winnow that down to a point that people can understand it a little easily and we do that through infographics you know we look back on the saturn 5 we see all that signage there you know we have to have a graphic designer to put those things together so you know we we need the artist and you know i i have to admit you know being a designer here at nasa you know i don't get to fly on the rockers but man they, i get to do some really cool stuff and it is a wonderful career and i get to work with amazing people so you know all, keep that career option in your head if you're on an art trajectory and you want to uh, come work at NASA. That is a very real possibility. So always, always uh, don't don't rule out your options. Alrighty. So single point perspective. I'm going to start with the. So I think, you know, we got a pretty good view on our on our Saturn V here. So and I, I kind of like the idea of it. You know, we're birds and it's blasting off and it's whizzing right by us. And so I'm going to you know try to draw something from that perspective here. And Mark, can you believe it? I didn't, I don't have a pen. I had to, or I don't have a pencil. I had to grab a pen. So, oh, hey, pen. oh boy. So, so I will. I, uh, Here, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it with pen too. I'll, I got a pen. <laughs> so, I'll do a ball, go ball. All right. Way. So I'll rough it out and then Mark will show you the correct way to do it. <laughs> ah, we're good. We're good. All right. So all first right. thing I'm going to do, I'm going to just put my little dot here. And if I think about how my rocket's launching, you know, that would, like where on the paper? Oh, I'm kind of down, down here, here in the, the lower bottom. corner here. So I've got you know my four okay. corners. So about right there. I'm kind of just focusing from here up and, and for this drawing because that's about what fits on my screen here. So if I think about it, that's kind of where my launch pad is down there. That that was the point of origin for my rocket. So so you know, if I have a pencil, I would kind of just lightly sketch out some lines. Maybe I'll do that just kind of a little, little light. Maybe you guys can't see them, but I can barely see that. So now I've got some guides, right? And that single point is going to come and collapse down. Oh, that's good. Collapse down right You're there. You're going to use one point perspective. I, I get it. All right. I get yeah, it. cool. All right. And so now, um, since I got a pen, I'm going to do a foreshortened circle, but I'm only going to do half of it down here. So I'll do just a little, a little curve there. You know, if you're going to do a full circle, you can do it all the way around. If you have a pencil and come in and erase Jack, it. Jack, is mine too wide? Is mine too wide, or is that? I'm going to swipe my comments around. No, that I think that's. Jack, is is, is mine okay? I think it looks fine. Did you do your? Oh, we have England. We have we have Dace from uh, Norwich, England. She's coordinating a whole tour for me through the art galleries and uh, student uh, children's hospital and the art university. Dace is on from United Kingdom. Wow, we've got a global community. You know, um, NASA is very into our global partners. We actually have a lot of folks that are flying with us on the International Space Station, helping us to build the space station. 
we have like seven different countries from around the world. So it's it's kind of cool wow. how uh, you know art you know it's a it's a global phenomenon and and exploration and all you know you think about what those things have in common they they lift humanity up right so that's that's kind of what we what we try to do so i love that lift humanity up with your imagination so i'm i'm actually using the saturn 5 as a reference here so i probably won't do all the detail but i'll do a few pieces and i can see how it has this cowling that i'm going to point out there it is this cowling that kind of curves in here so i may I'm going to go ahead and represent that a little bit and we've got uh, a cylinder on top of that and I'm going to keep with the uh, the four shortened lines here and I'll just kind of sketch out this way just really rough sketching it you know if I had a pencil I prefer a pencil because I always go back in and I can erase and I can use it to smear the graphite around and check check do I go in do I go in more than that or is that enough right there? I think that's that's perfect looks good to me so so I match this curve then right I match that yep, just match that up and then I'm going to Okay. I'm gonna pretend like it's flying right by us, and so uh, that, that, no, that would be okay. two point foreshortening, wouldn't it? So if I had it disappearing I, 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 in that I direction, so uh, it's looking good, looking good, whatever right, it is. So. Seven point. I don't <laughs> think awesome. So I may have it kind of curving away from us at this point. So I kind of like that idea. Oh, that oh, I get it. Yeah, so I my, get it. It's, it's so little curve opposite. Yeah. So we don't. I don't want it flying right at me. I just want to be close as it flies by. So. Uh, okay, so now kind I'll, of I'll kind of lens. disappear into that corner here. So this is really rough, guys. So Wait, sorry. I, oh, it's so it's so great. No, oh, this is awesome. It just shows you. It doesn't have to be perfect, man. It doesn't have to. Be, right. So now. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make it go. Just go. Kind of looks it. like a, a tin man a little bit there. But so I've I've got oh, the rough yes, shapes now. Love it, and then I'm going to determine my point of light so we'll have the sun coming up over the earth here so i'll draw my my light source there and okay wait i gotta do this point now is the point uh is that tip is that tapered yeah i would taper that off so that's going to be the the very top of our rocket that's the launch escape system right there so that's where it's going to come to a point okay. is, is mine too pointy or is that okay i think that looks pretty good i'd stretch it out maybe just a little bit or maybe just kind of round it off towards the top so, so go up and then yeah up perfect here. yeah because it's kind of it's now moving away from us right so okay now i just have to tell you guys jack is sitting with the, his sketchbook on his knees holding the camera in one hand drawing with his other hand <laughs> just so you guys understand this is a really really hard what he's doing thank you yeah no problem it's it's kind of an experience here so now we've got the uh, the curvature of the earth we're going to go ahead and show it in flight and i'm just going to do sort of a simple circle coming around this way here and since our sun's up here, you know, we can go in and draw on clouds later to, to show, you know, the, the sun rising over the earth and show this part in darkness. But uh, let's see, we're going we're gonna to have it in flight. So I'm going to do a little, bit of a, a little bit of thrust vector coming out, just some lines to show movement here. And I'm going to have those lines disappearing into our exhaust plume. So I'll do a little cloud around it. And then I'll run this all the way down to our point of origin to show that we've had a nice straight successful launch with no anomalies we can see it like coming right up at us and a few more clouds here so now we've got our our plume is just rocketing away that seven and a half million pounds of thrust just pushing this whole stack up into space all right so now we got our sun over here so i'm going to come in i'm just going to add a little bit of hash shading some hash marks just to show a little bit of depth as we kind of move it up, Oops, sorry, I didn't adjust my camera. I can hear the tour. I can hear. The, I can hear all the tourists in the back. Yeah, <laughs> we had a lot of folks. You know, this. Hey, what was the what was the name of that catwalk that you took my art teachers on? Uh, the, he tracked to gave us a like a four hour personal tour of my art teachers from my summer art camp in Houston. It was a highlight of everybody's whole week, except for teaching the little kids how to draw and paint and dance. Uh, what was the name of that that room? So we went in a few places. There was one place that we went into that I'd never been before, and it was one of the space station training simulators. Oh, that yeah, was incredible! Yeah, in that room you had the different areas of the space station that were mocked up that you could walk inside. So that was that was pretty phenomenal. But that was off of the tourist. That was just special, right? That's only for for uh, that's not for to, uh, normal. We got a special backstage, right? Oh no! Oh, I think we lost Jack. Hold on, I'm gonna pull Jack back. Hold on, guys. Hold on. I'm gonna load Jack in again. Hold on. Hold on. We're gonna get Jack back on here. 
Jack, we lost Jack. Hold on, guys. Uh, I think his battery died. So uh, hold on. I'm going to see if he can fix it real quick. So we can keep on adding here. I'm not sure what, uh, what he was going to add, but this is so cool. While we're waiting for him, let's go ahead and add an atmosphere back here. I'm going to add an atmosphere. And uh, we'll just see. If, you, if someone sees Jack more log back in let me know isn't that cool look at that one point perspective rocket i want to know uh you guys can look at pull it up on your on your iphones or your smartphones and your tablets and and see see i'm just using cross hatching i'm using a ballpoint pen this is what tim decker T tim decker does this all right, does Jack back on yet, guys? Or did we did we lose him for? He must have he must have ran out of battery. He must have run out of battery. So I'll just give him another one more minute. So you guys, let me know. You scream and holler if you see Jack. Now it's gonna get. Uh, uh, let's do a USA on the side here. Okay. <clears throat> you know what? Here I am. I am saying, let's Earth, let's us Earth and Earthlings go to Mars. Earth, Earth, Earth is number one. Earth is number one. We are number one planet. Earth is number one. Jack, Jack. Oh, that's funny, Keith. Jack, Jack. Oh, you are funny. That is so funny. You guys are so clever. The Titanic, remember that movie? Jack, where are you, Jack? Okay, I think that Earth, we are Earth. Earth is number one. Go on to Mars or bust. Here, ready? Let's put, let's put a little thing here. Mars or bust. Mars, Mars or bust. And then, here, let's put a window right here. I'm going to put you guys. I'm going to put you up here. Here, Jack comes back on. He's not going to be able to draw. I'm going to have you leaning out. Look at you're leaning out. You're leaning out here. Here's the uh, and you're waving. Okay, here you're leaning out. You're holding on. Here's your there's your thickness here. And wait, there's the hair's going this way. Woohoo! Wait, I'm going to go like this. All right, so there's your... All right, there you are. Do you like it? And you're going, Mars or bust. We are Earth. We are Earth. Woohoo! Taking off here. All right, guys. Well, I just uh, thank you for drawing with us. Jack, I know you're not there right now, but I'm going to text you all kinds of notes. You are amazing, wonderful talent. I just I hope I can draw with you once a month for the rest of my life. Just one of my favorite people on the planet. Thank you, Jack. You're awesome. Uh, and if you get a chance, guys, get a copy of my book. You can draw in 30 days. I hope you draw with me right here. If you want to, come to my uh, Comic Con, February 22nd, Wizard World. Use the half-off code BOGO. March 7th, I'll be at San Diego Comic Fest. Take a screenshot. March 14th, Emerald City, Seattle, Chicago. March 22nd, 24th, St. Louis, 5th through 7th, Comic Plus, Houston, Texas, 10th through 12th. And June 15th through 16th, Washington State, Summer Con, up in Puyallup. If you know someone who uh, is connected with children's hospitals, please go to my website, which is Mark Kessler up here, markkessler.com. Click the nonprofit and please help me get connected with children's hospitals and schools in the area. I'd love to donate some programs. I love you guys. That was just so much fun. I'll put my little logo right there. Jack Moore, you're awesome. Thank you guys, everybody. I'll see everybody tonight at 6.30 Pacific Time, 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern, and 7.30 Mountain Time. We're going to have Tom Bancroft as our special guest artist, character de designer for Mulan, for Pocahontas, for... Tarzan for Veggie Tales. It's just so great. Thanks again, you guys. You're awesome. I love you. I'll draw with you guys later. Bye, everybody.